न्यूरो फिजियोलॉजी का चैप्टर नंबर 47 यूनिट नंबर 9 हम कर रहे हैं फ्रॉम गाइटन चैप्टर का नाम है सेंसरी रिसेप्टर्स न्यूरोनल सर्किट्स फॉर प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन ऑब्वियसली वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट सम इंपॉर्टेंट रिसेप्टर्स दैट परसीव इंफॉर्मेशन एंड सिग्नल्स फ्रॉम एन स्टिमुलस एंड देन हाउ दे आर प्रोसेस्ड अवर परसेप्शन ऑफ सिग्नल विद इन अवर बॉडीज एंड ऑफ द वर्ल्ड अराउंड अर्स आर मीडिएटेड बाय अ कॉम्प्लेक्स सिस्टम of sensory receptors that detect such stimuli such as touch sound light pain cold warmth and so many other different type of stimuli in this chapter we are going to discuss the basic mechanism whereby these receptors change the sensory stimuli into nerve signals that are then conveyed to and processed in the central nervous system so obviously if uh, you imagine on daily basis you are perceiving a lot of signals आप की आईज जो हैं वो देख रही हैं आपकी बॉडी में टच की फीलिंग है पेन की फीलिंग है सो यू हैव अ लॉर ऑफ यू नो डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ सेंसेशन कोल्ड वार्म लाइट फील करती हैं आपकी आईज सो दैट यू सी द इमेजेस ये सारी सेंसेशन हैं जो आप प्रोसेस करते हैं और ब्रेन में उसकी इंटरप्रिटेशन होती है सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर आपको पेन स्टूबलस मिल रहा है कोई आपको यहाँ पे पिंच बो दे तो वो आपको फील होगी किसी ने पिंच बोई है अगर कोई आपको प्यार से हक करे तो उसकी वार्मथ उसकी सेंसेशन आपको फील होगी सो दीज आर ऑल द सेंसेशन एंड दे आर परसीव्ड बाय रिसेप्टर्स और फिर दे आर प्रोसेस्ड इन द ब्रेन ओके सो लेट्स स्टार्ट डिस्कसिंग द चैप्टर First thing first, कि what are the different types of sensory receptors that we have in our body? Obviously, ये जितनी भी sensations हम feel करेंगे उनके लिए there has to be receptors, and they are broadly classified into five different types of basic uh, sensory receptors. Number one is the mechano receptors, uh, thermo receptors, then nocci receptors, electromagnetic receptors, and chemo receptors. And each type of receptor receive particular type of information. So, for example. मैकेनो रिसेप्टर्स डिटेक्ट मैकेनिकल कंप्रेशन कोई अगर आपका हाथ पकड़ के दबा रहा है सो दैट इज मैकेनिकल कंप्रेशन थर्मो रिसेप्टर इज ऑब्वियसली वर्ड थर्मो आ गया यहाँ पे सो इट इज समथिंग व्हिच इज परसीविंग टेम्परेचर सो लो टेम्परेचर सच एज इन कोल्ड एंड वार्म टेम्परेचर वो जिन रिसेप्टर्स के जरिए हम फील करते हैं दे आर नोन एज थर्मो रिसेप्टर्स देन देर आर नो सी रिसेप्टर्स विच आर ऑल्सो कॉल द पेन रिसेप्टर सो दिस द पेन पाथवेज then electromagnetic receptors they are particularly ones found in the retina of the eye because they detect light then we have chemo receptors they are present in your mouth for example because they detect taste they are also present in the uh, you know blood vessels because oxygen level is then sensed uh, and there are also examples jahan carbon dioxide or osmolarity of the plasma can also be sensed by different parts of the body so those which are detecting the chemical changes are called chemo receptors okay ye panch tarah ke receptors hain jo aapko pata hone chahiye there is also a very nice table here so classification of sensory receptors we have mechano receptors number 2 we have thermo receptor for cold and warmth we have nocci receptor for pain we have electromagnetic receptors rods and cones of the eye and then we have chemo receptors which are taste smell uh, how we detect the levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the blood and osmolarity blood glucose ki sensation so all these categories and their examples are there okay mechanical receptor mechanical receptors are particularly those receptors which feel the pressure the mechanical pressure they are present in the skin they are present in the deep tissues we'll talk about them in a minute okay so we will discuss the function of a few specific types of receptors primarily the peripheral mechano receptors is ki lambi list hai actually aap dekhe to skin mein there is a long list of mechano receptors mesenchymal capsules encapsulated and things blah 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 we'll talk about them then in the deep tissues these are all the receptors then hearing sound receptors within the cochlea Uh, these are also examples of mechano receptors then equilibrium sensation also in the air apparatus and uh, arterial pressure because pressure is a mechanical thing so arterial pressure jo ki carotid sinus pe particularly better receptors feel karte so all these are examples of uh, uh, receptors jo mechanical pressures type ki cheez ko bear karte so they are mechano receptors okay we'll talk about them in detail Now, differential sensitivity of receptor. What does that mean? How do two types of sensory receptors detect different types of stimuli? The answer is by differential sensitivity. That is, each type of receptor is highly sensitive to one type of stimulus for which it is designed. यानी जो mechano receptor का काम है, वो best अपने particular stimuli को feel करेगा. It's not going to feel temperature. It's going to feel pain. It's only going to feel the mechanical stuff. Okay. 
so uh, they have differential capabilities that is the point thus the rods and cones of the eye are highly responsive to light but they are almost completely non responsive to temperature and all these things so aank mein aapko andar garmi nahi lagti ya aapko thand nahi lagti eyes mein because wo jo eyes mein receptors hain rods and cones mein they are responsive to um, you know electromagnetic radiation light for example but they're not responsive to temperatures isi tarah the osmoreceptors of the supra optic nuclei in the hypothalamus they uh, can detect minute changes in the osmolarity but they cannot respond to other stimuli such as sound finally the pain receptors in the skin are almost never stimulated by usual touch they are only stimulated by painful stimuli agar koi pyar se aapka haath pakad ke apne haath us pe pyar se ghuma raha hai so you will not feel pain there it will be a very nice feeling lekin agar koi daba the zor se haath ko so that's a painful stimulus so painful stimuli will activate the pain receptors okay then the modality of sensation तो इस पूरी हेडिंग का टेक होम मैसेज क्या है कि हर तरह का रिसेप्टर एक पर्टिकुलर तरह के स्टूबलस को रिस्पॉन्ड करता है ये नहीं है कि हर रिसेप्टर हर काम कर रहा है लाइट रिसेप्टर पेन को भी फील कर रहा है ऐसी ऐसी कहानी नहीं है ठीक है ना ईच ऑफ द प्रिंसिपल टाइप्स ऑफ सेंसेशन दैट वी कैन एक्सपीरियंस सच एज पेन touch sight sound and so forth is known as a modality of sensation so pain is a single modality of sensation touch is a modality sight is a modality yet despite the fact that we experience these different modalities of sensation nerve fibers transmit only impulses yani nerve fiber ko nahi pata ki mere andar se pain guzar raha hai usme se impulses jaati hai we feel them because they are processed in the higher centers then the question is obviously how do different nerve fibers transmit different modalities the answer to this question is Each nerve tract terminates at a specific point in the CNS. Brain में particular जगह पे जाके वो end हो जाता है पूरा path पे. And the type of sensation felt when a nerve fiber is stimulated is determined by the point of nervous system to which the fibers lead. For example, if a pain fiber is stimulated, the person perceives pain regardless of what type of stimulus excites the fiber. The stimulus can be electricity. It can be overheating. it can be crushing of the fibers or stimulation of the pain nerve ending by anything uh, else such as damage of the tissues in all these cases the person perceives pain likewise if a touch fiber is stimulated by electrical uh, excitation of a touch receptor or in any other way uh, there will be because it is a particular uh, you know touch fiber activated so touch feeling will be activated in the particular part of the brain this is specify of nerve fibers for transmitting only one modality of sensation called labor line principle ab ye baat na aur thoda detail mein samajh lo so see for example this is your brain okay and uh, in your brain you have different area so that is the area say for example for receiving pain so aur yahan pe kuch fibers aayenge jo ye aapka haath hai suppose aur is haath par uh, ye pain fiber hai pain receptor aur ye pain fiber jo yahan pe is pain area mein aake end kar raha hai अब अगर कोई आपको पिन चुभ हुए तो भी ये पेन फाइबर एक्टिवेट होगा कोई इस जगह पे बर्निंग जला दे इसको तब भी पेन फाइबर एक्टिवेट होगा uh, कोई यहाँ पे अगर सिर्फ लाइट मारेगा तो लाइट से ये एक्टिवेट नहीं होगा तो लाइट से कोई पेन नहीं होगा सो so, पॉइंट ये है कि किसी भी वजह से इसको मैं क्रश भी कर सकता हूँ आई कैन जस्ट टेक अ फॉर्सैप या कोई लकड़ी उठा के यहाँ पे हिट करना शुरू कर दो सो वॉट एवर स्टिमुलस एक्टिवेट दीज रिसेप्टर्स अगर पेन रिसेप्टर्स एक्टिवेट होंगे तो ये ब्रेन के एक पर्टिकुलर एरिया को स्टिमुलेट करेंगे यहाँ तक मैसेज को लेके जाएंगे डिपोलराइजेशन को लेके जाएंगे नर्व इम्पल्स को लेके जाएंगे एंड इफ दिस एरिया इज एक्टिवेटेड बाई वॉट एवर स्टिमुलस द पर्सन विल फील पेन ठीक है तो इसे कहते हैं लेबल्ड लाइन प्रिंसिपल यानी हर लाइन लेबल्ड है ये लाइन पेन की है तो इसमें से पेन की सेंसेशन में गुजर के पेन के एरिया को एक्टिवेट करना है अगर ये लाइन टच की होती तो टच की फीलिंग आती है सो so, हर मतलब ये मैं ऐसा इसको आसान जबान में ये समझाता हूँ कि घर में एक पाइप है जिसमें से पानी जा रहा है सो so ये पानी का पाइप है इस कंटाइंस ओनली वाटर फिर एक पाइप है जिसमें से गैस गुजर रही है सो so ये गैस का पाइप है फिर एक ऐसी पाइप है जिसमें से इलेक्ट्रिक केबल्स गुजर रही है तो ये इलेक्ट्रिसिटी का पाइप है सो ईच पाइप ईच लाइन has a designated supply so this is what is known as the label line principle okay now let us so ab tak aapko receptors ki types pata chal gayi ye pata chal gaya ki wo receptors jab activate hote hain to wo signals ko brain ke ek particular area tak transmit karte hain now let's dive a little deeper now we talk about the transduction of the sensory stimuli into nerve impulses ki jab अगर ये जो भी से फॉर एग्जांपल दिस इज योर हैंड और यहाँ पे कोई एक पेन रिसेप्टर है अगर ये एक्टिवेट हो जाता है तो ये नर्व इंपल्स में कैसे ट्रांसमिट होता है 
so local electrical currents at nerve endings are the receptor potentials what happens ki all sensory receptors have one feature in common whatever the type of stimulus that excites the receptor so once this receptor is excited it can be by a pin by another needle by somebody pressing your hand whatever the stimulus once the receptor is activated its immediate effect is to change the membrane electrical potential us receptor ka jo electrical potential hai wo change ho jata hai and this is known as the receptor potential different receptors can be excited in one of the several ways to cause the receptor potentials for example by mechanical deformation of uh, receptor which stretches the receptor membrane and opens the ion channel so suppose ye mera hath hai aur is hath mein yahan pe ek receptor hai jo pain receptor hai kisi bhi wajah se jab ye pain receptor activate hoga so there will be stretching and ions isme open honge and once the ion enters the game of depolarization begins theek hai so this is how it can be activated then by application of chemical to the membrane yahan koi chemical dal de it will become activated and open up the ion channels by change of the temperature of this area which opens up the ion channels by the effect of the electromagnetic radiation which can open up the ion channel so at the end of the day jo hai game yahi hai ki there will be opening of some ion channels aur jab ion channels open honge so there will be depolarization ions will enter in there okay these four means of excitation listed here receptors correspond in general to different types of known receptor in all the cases basic cause of the change in the membrane potential is change in the membrane permeability for some ions okay to phir ions diffuse karte hain and then there is a trans membrane potential generation depolarization mein yahi hota hai na ions open hote hain ion cell ke andar enter hote hain now maximum rece- receptor potential amplitude the maximum amplitude of most sensory receptor is about 100 mV but this level occurs only at an extremely high intensity sensor stimuli so if it is uh, stimulated with great force the stimulus is so high it can go up to 100 mV okay then relation of the receptor potential to action potential to abhi jo hum baat kar rahe the this is the uh, opening of ion channels at the level of the receptor और रिसेप्टर एक दफा अगर आइन को एंट्री मिल जाती है सो रिसेप्टर पोटेंशियल जनरेट होता है अब ये रिसेप्टर पोटेंशियल ऊपर नर्व में कैसे ट्रांसमिट होता है हाउ इज द एक्शन पोटेंशियल जनरेटेड व्हेन द रिसेप्शन पोटेंशियल अराइज अबव स्पेसिफिक थ्रेशोल्ड फॉर एलिसिटिंग एक्शन पोटेंशियल इन द नर्व फाइबर अटैच्ड टू द रिसेप्टर देन एक्शन पोटेंशियल हैपेंस एज इलस्ट्रेटेड इन द फिगर 472 विल जस्ट गो थ्रू दिस फिगर इन अ मिनट note also that more the receptor potential rises above the threshold level the greater the action potential frequency so this is the resting membrane potential of the receptor and there koi bhi stimulus aaya stretch ka stimulus ho sakta hai chemical ho sakta hai electromagnetic radiation ho sakti hai and now the ion channels open aur jab ion channels open honge so aap dekh rahe hain ki there is depolarization wave this is what is known as the receptor potential aur receptor potential jitna strong hoga action potential utna zyada tezi se aur frequently aayega so story again ye hai if this is your hand for example and this is a receptor it can be a pain receptor for example is receptor ke sath nerves hongi axons honge neurons honge so is stimulus ki wajah se pehli cheez ye hogi ki is receptor mein receptor potential generate hoga aur is receptor potential ke generate hone ke sath in nerve fibers mein action potential generate hoga jo brain ke ek particular area tak jayega so this is how they are activated now receptor potentials of the pisinian corpuscle that that is to give you an example of receptor function and we'll talk about this ke pisinian corpuscle has a central nervous uh, system ke sath connection ek pura nerve fiber core guzar raha hota hai surrounding this central nerve fiber are multiple concentric capsules thus compression anywhere on the outside of the corpuscle will elongate indent or otherwise deform the central fiber this is now the figure that i have to take you through figure 473 which is this diagram jahan pe ek pisinian corpuscle dikhaya और प्रेशर से वो जो पूरा पिसेनियन कॉप्सुल है इट हैज बीन क्रश्ड और जब वो क्रश हुआ है तो दे आर टेलिंग यू कि हाउ रिसेप्टर पोटेंशियल इज एक्चुअली एक्टिवेटेड या प्रोड्यूस इन द पिसेनियन कॉप्सुल ऑब्जर्व द स्मॉल एरिया ऑफ टर्मिनल फाइबर दैट हैज बीन डीफॉर्म्ड बाय कंप्रेशन ऑफ द कॉप्सुल एंड नोट दैट द आइन चैनल हैव ओपेंड अप इन द मेम्ब्रेन अलाउिंग द सोडियम आइंस टू एंटर इनटू द इंटीरियर ऑफ द फाइबर और ये ये सारा आपको यहां पे देखने नजर आ रहा है मामला कि दिस इज द एरिया जो कि डिफॉर्म्ड एरिया यहां पे डैमेज हुआ है क्रश हुआ है ये पिसिनियन कॉप्सुल है एंड दिस डिफॉर्म्ड एरिया से आइन ओपन हो गए सोडियम अंदर डिफ्यूज कर गया और जैसे ही सोडियम अंदर जाएगा देयर इज स्टार्ट ऑफ डीपोलराइजेशन सो इसको इस 
depolarization wave ko hum naam denge receptor potential so receptor potential is generated okay and now once the receptor potential is generated the receptor potential in turn induces a local circuit of current flow shown by the arrows because uh, abhi bola system activate ho gaya na kyunki positive charge andar aa gaya and there is a circuit of current started um so the nerve fiber is then activated at first the node of ranveer which lie inside the capsule of the pisinian crop so local current flow depolarizes the fiber membrane at this node which then sets off the typical action potentials which are transmitted along the nerve fiber so it's a simple story is pure ki summary ye hai ki first receptor potentials are generated jab ye receptor activate hoga because of any stimulus and this receptor potential then propagates as action potential aur yahi depolarization mein hota hai ki ions open hote hain channels ions andar cell ke enter hote hain and then the depolarization wave propagates relation between the stimuli intensity and receptor potential another important one um, if there is changing amplitude of the receptor potential caused by the progressively stronger mechanical compression this is known as increasing stimulus strength note that the amplitude increases rapidly at first but then progressively less so initially what will happen ke so this is the graph which you have to look at this is the strength of the stimulus yani ye aapka hath hai aur is hath par koi halke se pinch bo raha hai ya koi bahut zor se pinch bo raha hai so the halke wala is low stimulus of strength and zor wala is this one for example jo bahut strength ke sath pinch bo raha hai and the more the strength is the more is the amplitude of the receptor potential yahan jo receptor hai wo zyada receptor potential activate karega agar zyada stimulus hai but that happens to a point and then uske baad ek plateau achieve ho jata hai okay and that makes perfect sense okay if there is more stimulus then there is more receptor potential in turn the frequency of the repetitive action potential transmitted from sensory receptor increases the proximately in proportion to the increased receptor so that is fine jitna strength badh raha hai utna receptor potential badh raha hai uh, but that happens to a point aur uske baad it becomes uh, a plateau stage ye important point hai theek hai fir aapko aisa lagta hai ab wo pain ki aadat ho gayi hai ab koi pain jo ho raha hai aur aapko dard hi nahi ho raha adaptation kya hai receptors ki another characteristic of sensory receptor is that they adapt either partially or sometimes completely to any constant stimulus after a period of time that is when a continuous sensory stimulus is applied the receptor responds at a high impulse rate at first and then a progressively slower rate so ye aise hai na ki yaar aap first time jab koi cheez dekh rahe hain to hairan ho gaya na matlab maine ek koi bahut hi suppose khoobsurat si cheez dekh li and i am surprised नेक्स्ट टाइम देख लिया फिर देख लिया फिर देख लिया अब ये मुझे इतना एक्साइट नहीं कर रही सो so, बिल्कुल इसी तरह रिसेप्टर है एक दफा स्टूमुलस आया एक्साइटेड पावरफुल स्टूमुलस सुपर एक्साइटेड बट अब बार बार अगर स्टूमुलस आ रहा है उसी किस्म का नाउ इट बिकम्स एडेप्टेड अब इसको कोई खास फर्क नहीं पड़ रहा सो दैट एडेप्टेबिलिटी इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट कैरेक्टर ऑफ रिसेप्टर ओके देन फर्दर मोर समी रिसेप्टर एडेप्ट टू अ फार ग्रेटर एक्सटेंट देन अदर्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिनियन कॉपसोल्स एडेप्ट टू एक्सटेंशन within a few hundreds of a second extension matlab ye bilkul feel nahi karenge ab stimulus ko it is probable that most mechano receptors eventually adapt almost completely but some require hours or days so ek dafa aise hua ki mere father ka accident hua aur unki jo wrist bones thi kafi sari wahan pe fracture ho gaya obviously unko bandage wagara diya aur jo bhi uska protocol hota hai wo sab follow karke and he was sitting and resting at the home and one of my uncles visited and he said ke bhai sahab kya hua aapko bahut dard ho raha hoga to my father said yes bahut dard ho raha hai yaar and then the uncle said in a very funny way koi baat nahi thode dino mein aadat ho jayegi thode dino mein aadat ho jayegi now my uncle is not a doctor but he simply communicated a very important message ke bhai aapke jo yahan pe receptors hain thode dino mein they will adapt आदत हो जाएगी एडेप्ट कर लेंगे और फिर आपको पेन इतना फील नहीं होगा सो दिस इज व्हाट इज एडेप्टेशन ओके नाउ क्या मैकेनिज्म्स है बाय व्हिच द रिसेप्टर्स एक्चुअली एडेप्ट इट इज डिफरेंट फॉर ईच पर्टिकुलर रिसेप्टर फॉर एग्जांपल इन द आई रॉड्स एंड कोन्स एडेप्ट बाय चेंजिंग द कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ देयर लाइट सेंसिटिव केमिकल्स व्हिच आर प्रेजेंट विद इन देम इन केस ऑफ मैकेनो रिसेप्टर द रिसेप्टर दैट हैज बीन स्टडीड इन द ग्रेटेस्ट डिटेल इज द पिसिनियन कॉपसुल and adaptation in these pisinian capsules occurs in various ways first the pisinian capsules is a 
uh, viscoelastic structure so that when a distorting force is suddenly applied to one side of the capsule this force is instantly transmitted by the viscous component of the capsule directly to the same side of the central nerve fiber it's a bullshit story okay uh, just remember that uh, many of the receptors that you talk about they adapt okay uh, by different mechanisms you don't have to remember the mechanisms of adaptation slowly adapting receptors detect continuous stimulus strength the tonic receptors now some of the receptor takes much of a time to get adapted therefore they keep the brain constantly apprised of the status of the body because they are not completely blind they still feel the stimulus but they are going towards adaptation okay uh, other slowly adapting receptors in key are examples for example muscles mucolgi tendons and the others include receptors in the macula uh, better receptors of the arterial system key and chemoreceptors of the carotid and aortic bodies so they are all slowly adapting systems so they ultimately they will adapt but they do this very slowly and then there are some um, examples which are rapidly adapting receptors so they, they, they are very quick to adapt receptors that adapt rapidly cannot be used to transmit a continuous signal because they will adapt immediately after very very quick exposure they will no more be feeling the stimulus yet they react strongly while a change is actually taking place well this is not the important stuff to remember uh, take home message jo bottom line tha, wo aapko de diya ke, what is adaptation what are rapidly adapting uh, receptors what are slowly adapting receptors and then we move on to the next concept of signal intensity transmission or you do loves mujhe aapko samjhane hai is partial and temporal summation one of the characteristic feature of each signal that always must be conveyed in the signal intensity for example the intensity of pain the different gradations of intensity can be transmitted either by using increasing number of parallel fibers or by sending more action potentials the two mechanism are respectively known as spatial and temporal baat samajh mein nahi aayi kyunki maine abhi tak samjhai nahi to pehle samajhte hain spatial summation is diagram ke through samjhata hu thodi der mein but look at the text here first spatial summation mein ye hai ki increasing signal strength किस चीज का सिग्नल स्टिमुलस वो कुछ भी हो सकता है पेन हो सकता है टेम्परेचर हो सकता है इंक्रीजिंग सिग्नल स्ट्रेंथ इज ट्रांसमिटेड बाय यूजिंग प्रोग्रेसिवली ग्रेटर नंबर ऑफ फाइबर्स और इस फिगर में भी हम देखते हैं द फिगर शोज अ सेक्शन ऑफ द स्किन इनोवेटेड बाय लार्ज नंबर ऑफ पैरल पेन फाइबर्स ईच ऑफ दीज फाइबर आर्बोराइज इन टू हंड्रेड ऑफ माइन्यूट फ्री नर्व एंडिंग्स दैट सर्व एस पेन रिसेप्टर्स द एंटायर क्लस्टर ऑफ फाइबर from one pain fiber frequently covers an area of the skin about 5 cm this area is known as receptor field yani wo area skin ka isara skin ka area na so this is called uh, receptor field kyunki isko ek hi bundle ek hi nerve fiber cater kar raha hai to yahan pe receptors honge jo pain ko feel karenge koi agar aapko pain chub hoye dekhe to ye yahan se nerve intensity aur ye nerve is message ko leke aage jayegi is ek nerve bundle ke andar kai sare chote chote nerve fibers hain okay so one can also see from the figure that are rising the febrile overlap those from the pain ye uh, point ye hai ki there are so many small nerve fibers in each nerve bundle therefore a pin prick of the skin usually stimulate endings from many different pain fibers simultaneously when the prick is in the center of the receptive field of the particular pain fiber the degree of stimulation of the fiber is far greater as compared to if it is done on the sides okay on the periphery therefore the lower part of the figure 477 abhi dikhata hu ye figure shows three views of the cross section of the nerve bundle leading uh, from the skin area to the left is the effect of a weak stimulus with only a single nerve fiber being activated and then there is a moderate stimulus and then there is a very very strong stimulus or uh, the other two views of the nerve section shows effect of a moderate and a uh, strong stimulus with progressively more fibers being stimulated kya baat hai baat ye hai कि दिस इज योर स्किन एरिया और यहां ये पिंच बोई जा रही दिस इज द नर्व फाइबर अगर मैं हल्का स्टिमुलस यानी जरा सा पिंच बोगा तो सिर्फ देखेंगे लाल सिर्फ दो तीन फाइबर एक्टिवेट हो रहा है सो यहां जो रिसेप्टर पोटेंशियल बनेगा वो सिर्फ दो तीन नर्व फाइबर्स को एक्टिवेट करेगा लेकिन अगर मेरा स्टिमुलस मॉडरेट है यानी थोड़ा सा जोर से पिंच बो रहा हूं तो अब ज्यादा नर्व फाइबर्स एक्टिवेट हो रहे हैं और अगर बहुत ही ज्यादा जोर से पिंच बो रहा हूं तो और ज्यादा नर्व फाइबर्स एक्टिवेट हो रहे हैं सो द मोर पावरफुल द स्टिमुलस इज द मोर नंबर ऑफ नर्व फाइबर्स आर इन्वॉल्व दिस इज नोन एज पार्शल समेशन ओके ये डेफिनेशन याद रखनी है आपको एंड वॉट इज टेम्पोरल समेशन 
A second means of transmitting signal of increasing strength is by increasing the frequency of the nerve impulses in each fiber and this is called temporal summation. So this diagram is showing temporal summation that you have frequency increased. So frequency increased, so nerve bundles are the ones used to use. The more strong the stimulus will be, the more the message will be from the same nerve fibers. So you are now not involving more nerve fibers but you are uh, frequently passing the action potential okay so that type of summation is known as temporal summation these two definitions you should be very clear about then the next heading is transmission or processing of the signals in the neuronal pools they have central nervous system jo hai, it is composed of thousands to millions of neuronal pools some of these pools contain only few neurons whereas some others have a big number of neurons for example the entire cerebral cortex could be considered to be a single large neuronal pool because the whole cerebral cortex ke andar jo neurons hai, they all can be related functionally so they are a single neuronal pool is tarah brain stem mein honge is tarah aur jagahon pe honge so other neuronal pools include different basal ganglia cerebellum thalamus pons medulla to yahan pe jo neurons hai alag alag tarah ke groups hai so they are named as neuronal pools okay also the entire dorsal gray matter of the spinal cord is a pool so basically they are a group of neurons each neuronal pool has its own special organization obviously we know that uh, her part ki alag -alag ki organization hai. and uh, yet despite their differences in the function the pools also have many similar principles of function or principles kya hai, hum dekhte hai. Relaying of signals through the neuronal pool. So organization of the neurons for relaying signals. Now we have to go through this diagram uh, Which is a schematic diagram of several neurons in a neuronal pool showing input of fibers to the left and output to the right So on the left there is an input there and then this is the output here Okay, and that's a neuronal pool a ho sakta hai cerebral cortex a neuronal pool ho ya cerebellum ka ho so that's a neuronal pool, okay and uh, what I have to tell you further is that each input fiber divides to hundreds and thousands times providing thousands of more terminal fibers that are spread into a large area of that pool to synapse with the dendrites of the cell body of the neurons in the neural pool. The dendrites usually also arborizes and spread hundreds so there is huge branching of the incoming signals and they interact with the dendrites. You see these are the dendrites so these are the incoming messages so that's how they are arranged. The neuronal area stimulated by each incoming nerve fiber is called a stimulatory field. Note that large number of terminals from each input fiber lie on nearest neuron in its field, but progressively fewer terminal lie on the neuron farther away. But barrel baat ye ki ye ek neuron hai, ye incoming nerve fibers hai, so they branch and they interact with a lot of. So this is called the you know uh, stimulatory field and this is the term that you have to remember because here is stimulation hoga na, jo bhi message aega, the neuron will be stimulated so that area is known as stimulatory field where nerve fibers interact with the dendrites ke threshold and sub-threshold stimuli excitation or facilitation we uh, have uh, chapter 46 model discuss kiya. discharge of single excitatory presynaptic terminal almost never causes an action potential you need a lot more instead large number of input terminals must discharge or yahan aap dekh rahe hain kitne sare input terminal hain itni sare branches hain isliye taaki yahan action potential generate ho neuron ke andar okay now for example in figure 47.9 let us assume that six terminals must discharge almost simultaneously to excite one neuron Note that the input fiber 1, so this is the input fiber 1, so let me just remove this bit so that we know that we are talking about this fiber. So this is input fiber 1, has more than one uh, terminals to cause neuron to discharge. The stimuli from input fiber 1 to this neuron is said to be excitatory. It's also called supra threshold stimulus because it is above the threshold required. The required threshold is uh, that there should be six terminals, but uh, I can see that there are more than six terminals. So there is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is above threshold. It will definitely excite it. Um, input fiber one also contributes terminals to neurons B and C, but not enough to cause excitation. Very important point. Dekho, ye jo, uh, input fiber one hai, ye neuron A ke connect ho hai. Uh, is point say 
इस पॉइंट से इससे 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 और इससे सो किन को गिनो कितने हो गए वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन सो इनपुट फाइबर वन इज गिविंग टेन यू नो कॉन्टेक्ट पॉइंट टू न्यूरोन ए so this is 10 is obviously more than 6 so input fiber 1 it will excite this one i think it is also giving 1 2 1 2 only two points to neuron b to input fiber 1 neuron b ke liye excited tree nahi hai yahi input fiber neuron 1 ke liye excited tree hai so ye aapko is tarah se neurophysiological circuits ko samajhna padega okay now therefore stimuli to these neurons are said to be sub threshold yani not enough less than 6 and the neurons are said to be facilitated so they are not excitatory they are facilitative so they are excitatory when they have more than 6 contact points and they are only facilitative if they have less than 6 uh, contact points okay right so that was the whole story um ye jo zone hai well honestly they are not important ke discharge zone kya hai Uh, excited zone kya hai this is really not important i've never seen anyone asking this in the exam but anyways let's go through it figure 47.9 the same figure represents highly condensed version of a neuronal pool because each input fiber usually provides massive number of branching terminals to hundreds or thousands of the neurons so it's not just like interacting with one neuron or two neurons it is interacting with like hundreds and thousands of neurons और एक पूरी फील्ड बनती है जिसमें एक्साइटेशन या फैसिलिटेशन का फिनोमिना चल रहा होता है सो अभी एक फिगर देखते हैं और उसकी सेंट्रल पोर्शन में यू नो इन दिस फिगर डेजिग्नेटेड बाय द सर्कल एरिया ऑल दोज न्यूरॉन्स आर स्टिमुलेटेड बाय द इनकमिंग फाइबर देयर फॉर दिस इज सेट टू बी द डिस्चार्ज जोन ऑफ द इनकमिंग फाइबर ऑल्सो कॉल द एक्साइटेटेड जोन और लेमिनल जोन सो दिस इज द जोन जिसमें सिर्फ एक्साइटेशन हो रही है इसका मतलब ये है कि हर इनकमिंग फाइबर मोर देन सिक्स कॉन्टेक्ट पॉइंट्स बनाएगा इन न्यूरॉन्स के साथ और इस जोन के बाहर डिस्चार्ज जोन के बाहर देर इज फैसिलिटेशन गोइंग ऑन सो दिस इज कॉल्ड फैसिलिटेटेड जोन इसका मतलब ये है कि जो इनकमिंग फाइबर्स हैं दे विल मेक लेस देन सिक्स कॉन्टेक्ट पॉइंट्स विद द न्यूरोस ओके सो इन द सेंटर ऑफ द स्नैप्स इज द डिस्चार्ज जोन एंड इन द पैरिफरी इज द फैसिलिटेटेड जोन बट दे डोंट यूजली आस्क दिस इन एग्जाम ओके नाउ a neural pool uh, obviously can be inhibited some incoming fibers inhibit the neuron rather than exciting them this mechanism is opposite to that of facilitation and therefore an inhibitory zone because nervous system mein hamesha excitation nahi chal rahi hoti there is always inhibition also going on okay divergence of signals passing through the neural pool often it is important for weak signals entering the neural pool to excite far greater numbers of nerve fibers Uh, leaving the pool this phenomenon is called divergence two major types of divergence occur and they have entirely different purposes uh, this is an important definition so let's read them one more time it is important for weak signals entering the neuronal pool to excite far greater number of nerve fibers leaving the pool so weak signal will have to excite so many different neurons uh, isko kehte hain divergence yani ek neuron se kafi sare एक इनकमिंग फाइबर से काफी सारे न्यूरॉन को सिग्नल जा रहा है दिस फिनोमिना इज नोन एज डाइवर्जेंस फिनोमिना सो यू लुक हेयर दिस इज एन इनकमिंग फाइबर एंड देन लुक एट द नंबर ऑफ न्यूरॉन्स बीइंग एक्टिवेटेड बाय दिस इनकमिंग फाइबर डाइवर्ज हो रहा है दिस इज डाइवर्जेंस ओके एंड देन एम्पलीफिकेशन ऑफ द डाइवर्जेंस दिस इज एक्ट एब्सोल्युटली नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट so never ask this in exam and what is convergence it is obviously opposite to divergence let me find a figure for you if i can see uh convergence is that multiple sources so this is incoming source 1 incoming source 2 incoming source 3 and all of them are activating one single neuron so this is convergence okay ye bhi ek simple diagram hai ki there is convergence so ek input dusra input tisra input chautha input panchwa input and one neuron only Uh, being tackled, so this this type of thing. जहाँ signal एक input से multiple neurons को activate करे divergence और जहाँ इसका opposite हो कि multiple inputs और एक neuron हो, this is convergence. Okay, so just remember the definition. What is convergence and divergence? Not more than that. This is too much detail. You'll be getting confused with them. Then the neural circuit with both excitatory and inhibitory output signals. Sometimes an incoming signal to a neural pool causes output excitatory signal. going in one direction at the same time there are some inhibitory signals as well so that's very common so don't worry about it okay um sometimes gaitan mein na itni zyada detail likhi hoti hai ki you get you start getting really really confused ke isme kya padhna hai kya chhodna hai okay but then as a teacher this is my job to tell you okay what you have to focus and what not 
prolongation of signal by neuronal pool after discharge thus far we have considered signals that are merely relayed through the neuronal pool so abhi tak ki there was a receptor wo receptor activate hua neuronal circuit activate hua aur wo brain ke kisi higher center mein pahunch gaya aur neurons ko ye activate kar raha hai excited kar raha hai okay however in many cases the signal entering a pool caused causes a prolonged output discharge which is called after discharge lasting a few milliseconds to as long as many minutes after the incoming signal is even over so pain stimulus khatam ho gaya lekin aapko pain feel ho raha hai that's called after discharge okay synaptic after discharge and um, um, what is it when excitatory synapse discharge on the surface of the dendrite of a neuron a post synaptic electric potential develops in the neuron which lasts for some time at least few milliseconds Uh, especially when some of the long acting synaptic transmitter substances are involved as long as this potential lasts it can continue to excite the neuron the point is ke after discharge se aapko stimulus ke khatam hone par bhi pain feel hota rahega okay then what is oscillatory circuit as a cause of signal prolongation one of the most important of all circuits in the entire nervous system is the reverberatory or oscillatory circuit such circuits are caused by positive feedback when neuronal circuits that feedback to the uh, to re-excite the input of the same circuit so uh, consequently once stimulated the circuit may be just a completely again and again uh, excitation hoti rehti hai that's known known as a circuit or re or oscillatory circuit or reverberatory circuit okay and um, this is a diagram to show you the reverberatory circuit so there is neuronal input and uh, the uh, and there is an output obviously so input and output so that's the normal thing but these neurons somehow get connected in a way ki circuit bar bar ghumta rehta so again and again there is an input and again and again there is an output so there is an amplified signal to pain aapko itna nahi hai jitna zyada pain aap feel kar rahe ho that sort of the story okay and there were several possible varieties of reverberatory circuits they are shown in uh, different figure the simplest shown in 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 this particular figure which is uh, uh, this one explains that uh, you know only a single neuron is involved in this case output neuron sends collateral nerve fiber back to the own dendrite or soma so if you look at the diagram what's happening ke there is an input nerve fiber and this is the output neuron aur is output neuron se ek branch nikal ke wapas aake khud ko activate kar rahi hai so jaise hi yahan pe signal aata hai ye khud ko dobara activate karta so that's a recircuit and here there is one input and multiple output neurons and they are re exciting themselves and then there is a complete full oscillation so neurons are giving matlab aisa hota na seedha seedha ke yahan se input aaya aur ye neuron ne receive kiya aur ye message chala gaya output नहीं यहाँ पे इसको चैन नहीं आता ये एक ब्रांच भेजता है अपने आप को दोबारा एक्टिवेट करता है समटाइम्स ये किसी और न्यूरॉन को जब मैसेज देता है तो वो भी एक ब्रांच भेज के इसको एक्टिवेट करता है एंड देयर फॉर इट्स नॉट लाइक इनपुट आया आउटपुट हो गया और स्टिमुलस खत्म नो स्टिमुलस इज अगेन एंट्रिंग एज अ सर्किट दिस इज कॉल्ड रिवोबेटरी सर्किट और ऑस्किलेटरी सर्किट ओके सो दैट्स बेसिकली द डिस्कशन दैट आई हैड टू डू फॉर द ऑस्किलेटरी सर्किट then the next heading that we have to discuss is the continuous signal output from some neuronal circuits some of the neuronal circuits emit output signals continuously even without excitatory input signals that's interesting kabhi aapne ye suna hai ki haath mein pain ho raha hai aur koi painful stimulus nahi you're just feeling the pain so there in that case there is no input but there is an output to feel the pain okay at least two mechanisms Uh, can cause this effect number 1 is the continuous intrinsic neuronal discharge and number 2 is the continuous reverberatory signal so stimulus ab khatam ho gaya but you are still feeling it and this one continuous intrinsic neuronal discharge is that there is no extrinsic stimulus intrinsically your neurons are activated okay so this is the explanation again um, i just talked about the concept there so you should remember the concept right then what is rhythmical signal output many neuronal circuits emit rhythmical output signals for example rhythmical respiratory signal originates in the respiratory center of the medulla and the pons and this is obviously very very important one um, you know important point regarding this rhythmical output is the fact that it continues throughout the life 
and obviously it is required you have to do respiration throughout the life other rhythmic signals such as those that causes a scratching movement of the hind limb of a dog or walking movement of an animal they require input stimuli koi na koi stimulus hoga so these type of movement jo bar bar ho rahi hai there is continuous firing that is called rhythmical movement okay respiration is one example that we just discussed ab ye jo neuronal circuits hai kitne stable hain kitne unstable hain dekhe baat ye hai ki almost every part of the brain connects either directly or indirectly with some other parts of the brain they are very much connected thalamus pons i mean in sab ke koi na koi pathway hain jo ek dusre ke sath ek dusre ko connect kar rahe hain and therefore it creates a serious challenge for the neuronal circuits ke kaun sa pathway activate hoga to kaun sa nahi hoga because connections hai na in the first part excites the second the second and third and third the fourth and so on until finally the signal re excites the first part aur ek pura reverberatory circuit start ho jata hai then the excitatory signal entering any part of the brain would set up a continuous cycle of re excitation ye bada चैलेंज है यू नो इफ दिस इज द ब्रेन फॉर एग्जांपल और मैंने इस पार्ट को एक्टिवेट किया एक्साइटेशन इस पार्ट की है ये अगले पार्ट को एक्टिवेट करेगा ये इसको करेगा ये इसको करेगा दोबारा आकर के ओरिजिनल पार्ट को तो ये तो मतलब एक दफा सिग्नल आया और आप सारी जिंदगी पेन महसूस करते रहेंगे लेकिन ऐसा होता नहीं है इफ दिस साइकिल शुड अकर द ब्रेन वुड बी इन इन इनकेज बाय मैस ऑफ अनकंट्रोल्ड रिवर्बेटिंग सिग्नल्स बार बार ये सर्कुलेटरी सिग्नल्स होते हैं और आपको पेन ही पेन फील हो रहा होता लेकिन ऐसा होता नहीं है सो थैंकफुल ऐसा नहीं होता सच एन एफेक्ट occurs in widespread areas of the brain during epileptic seizures so if this happens this is a pathology seizures will happen okay how does the central nervous system then prevent this effect from happening all the time the answer lies mainly in two basic mechanisms number one there are inhibitory circuits and then there are fatigue of synapses yani agar aap ek part of the brain ko activate karte hain to aisa nahi hai ki wo har waqt hi pura cycle chalata rahega aur bar bar activate hota rahega at some point this will get tired and they will be fatigued to the synaptic uh, system और ये फटीक बड़ा इंपॉर्टेंट है तो ये सिग्नल रुकेगा एंड देन दी अदर थिंग इज इनिबिशन देर विल बी न्यूरॉन्स विच विल इनिबिट एट सम पॉइंट तो ये सिग्नल एक पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट से आगे बढ़ेगा ही नहीं सो so ये दो मैकेनिज्म हमारे ब्रेन में और हमारे नर्वस सिस्टम में बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है इनिबिटरी सर्किट्स एंड द फटीक मैकेनिज्म टू टाइप्स ऑफ इनिबिटरी सर्किट्स आर देयर व्हिच हेल्प द ब्रेन एक्चुअली टू प्रिवेंट द एक्सेसिव स्प्रेड ऑफ सिग्नल्स वन इज इनिबिटरी फीडबैक सर्किट्स दैट रिटर्न फ्रॉम द टर्मिनाय ऑफ पाथवे बैक टू द इनिशियल एक्साइटरी जो पाथवे स्टार्ट हुआ था सो फॉर एग्जांपल अगर यहाँ पे एक्साइटेशन हुई है सो so ये पाथवे आगे कैरी ऑन हो रहा है और इससे फिर यहाँ पे इनिबिटरी सिग्नल्स आते हैं सो दैट्स काइंड ऑफ अ नेगेटिव फीडबैक लूप एंड दिस एग्जिस्ट सो दिस इज नंबर वन एंड नंबर टू इज सम न्यूरोनल पुल दैट एक्सर्ट ग्रॉस इनिबिटरी कंट्रोल ओवर द वाइड स्प्रेड एरियाज ऑफ द ब्रेन जेनरली आर प्रेजेंट इन द ब्रेन सो ब्रेन कंटेन्स इनहिबिटेड न्यूरोन्स एनी वेज जिसका काम यही है कि मुख्तलिफ जगहों पर जाके वो इनिबिशन कर रहा होता है सो वेन देर इज ए सिग्नल इट्स यूजली इन वन डायरेक्शन फ्लो इट इज नॉट कंटिन्यूइंग एज अ रिवर्बेटरी सर्किट बिकॉज दिस इज इनहिबिटेड सो दिस इनहिबिशन द इनहिबिटरी सर्किट्स आर सुपर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर योर ब्रेन ओके एंड ऑल्सो द फिनोमिन ऑफ फटीक फटीक इंपॉर्टेंट है सोचिए आप इतने पावरफुल होते कि आप थकते ही ना तो आप सारा दिन काम करते इधर भागते उधर भागते भागते ही रहते आपको रोकता कौन फटीक इंपॉर्टेंट है रेस्ट के लिए सो सैनेप्टिक फटीक मीन सिंपली दैट द सैनेप्टिक ट्रांसमिशन बिकम्स प्रोग्रेसिवली वीकर एंड दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट टू स्टॉप द सिग्नल वरना पेन स्टिमुलस अगर आप फील कर रहे हो और कोई फटीक ही नहीं है तो आप सारी जिंदगी पेन का सिग्नल हटा दो तब भी ब्रेन फील कर रहा है पेन को दिस इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी इन योर फेवर सो ये दो मैकेनिज्म आपको याद रखने हैं कि दे आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मैकेनिज्म टू कंट्रोल uh particularly to eliminate the uh, whatever the stimulus was if it was pain or temperature sensation to so sensation ko rokne ke liye one is inhibitory circuit the other one is fatigue phenomena both of them are very important okay then automatic short term adjustment of the pathway sensitivity by fatigue mechanism so we have talked about fatigue mechanism not more than this because this is very very boring text written here and then long term changes in the synaptic sensitivity caused by automatic down regulation or up regulation of synaptic receptors so the long term sensitivities of synapses can be changed tremendously by up regulating the number of receptor proteins the mechanism for this is uh, you know it, it's a long time consuming process uh, because isme kafi protein expression involved hai receptor proteins are being formed constantly by the endoplasmic reticula golgi apparatus mein wo apparatus mein they will be processed so what happens ki agar ek tarah ka stimulus aapko bar bar feel ho raha hai then uh, ek to phenomena maine aapko bataya tha the phenomena of adaptation and then this also happens some particular receptors can be down regulated so for example this stimulus is no more received as is used to be uh, received earlier on okay 
It is indeed fortunate that upregulation and downregulation of the receptors as well as other control mechanisms of the adjusting synaptic sensitivity continually adjust the sensitivity in each circuit. This is very important. I mean, I was watching a movie in my childhood. There was a hero who said, kill me, kill me, kill me. And people are killing him, so he won't be able to kill him. That was a movie, by the way. But in that concept, he was showing that kill me, kill me. He had trained his receptors in this way. ये हो सकता है उसके सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम में प्रोटीन अप रेगुलेटेड डाउन रेगुलेटेड इनिबिशन पाथवे साइनेप्टिक फटीक पाथवे और अब उसको पेन फील नहीं हो रहा सो दैट इज पॉसिबल एंड दैट्स काइंड ऑफ वेरी गुड फॉर योर बॉडी ओके बट अदरवाइज आपको जरा सा पेन भी बहुत लगता और हर वक्त लगता कंसीडर फॉर अ मोमेंट हाउ सीरियस इट वुड बी द सेंसिटिविटीज ऑफ ओनली अ फ्यू ऑफ दीज सर्किट्स वुड बी एबनॉर्मली हाई वन माइट देन एक्सपेक्ट ऑलमोस्ट कंटिन्यूअस मसल क्रैम्प्स सीजर्स मेंटल टेंशन हेलोसिनेशन तो हमारी बॉडी में सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम में जो इनहेबिटरी पाथवेज हैं दे आर एक्चुअली अ ब्लैसिंग वरना आपको जरा सी कोई चीज टच करती है और आपको पेन होता थैंक गॉड ऐसा नहीं है फॉर्चुनेटली दैरिक कंट्रोल नॉर्मली री एडजस्ट देंसिटिविटी सो यू आर ब्लैस्ड बेसिकली ये चैप्टर बिलीव मी आई विश के मुझे किसी ने मेरे मेडिकल करिकुलम के वक्त जब मैंने एम किया था इस तरह पढ़ा दिया होता मैं ये इसलिए कह रहा हूँ क्योंकि जब मैंने ये चैप्टर खुद पढ़ना शुरू किया था ना इट फेल्ट सो बोरिंग टू मी कि जब मैंने पहला ही पेज पढ़ा था एंड आई वाज लाइक मैं ये चैप्टर नहीं कर रहा यार और फिर मैंने वो नहीं किया आफ्टर माय एमबीबीएस आई हैड टू डू इट फॉर माय प्रोफेशनल एग्जाम सो गाइज आई होप कि आपने ये फोर्टी फोर्टी मिनट्स की जो वीडियो है इसको इंजॉय किया है आई नो दिस इज अ बोरिंग टॉपिक बट दिस इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक सारे कॉन्सेप्ट इंपॉर्टेंट है सो ऑल द वेरी बेस्ट आपसे मिलता हूँ अगली न्यूरो फिजियोलॉजी की वीडियो में बहुत जल्द अपना ख्याल रखिएगा